Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to part one of our marriage series. Where we will be quickly going through different steps to your journey towards getting married. And the first, and in this first video, what we will cover is the requirements for marriage as well as the rights of the spouse. Because I do think this is essential to start to start on because you kind of need to know what you're getting yourself into and if you're ready or not. Inshallah. Ta Inshallah. Okay. So, the first thing I would like to touch on for the requirements is who is eligible to get married. The first the first thing you need to know is who is eligible to get married and that is an adult and what makes someone an adult is when they hit the stage of puberty i know you might be losing your pants right now but calm down it's not that crazy so puberty starts between nine years old to 14 and a half so when someone reaches the age of puberty, then they are automatically eligible to get married. And that goes for both male and female. So, one of the requirements for marriage for a man that a woman doesn't have would be being financially capable. And um, we have to understand by requirement here, we're saying in order for the hakam shari to be mandub, so in order for the legal ruling to be re recommended for them to get married, they would reach these um, milestones. So a woman would uh, not have to provide financially in the marriage, but the man would. So because of that, he should be financially capable. So there's an extra uh, requirement for a man in that case. And for men and women, the hukam shari is going to be far. It's going to be required and mandatory for them to get married in the case that they're already acting how married people do. That's what the scholars will say, someone who is in need of marriage. So if you're in need of marriage, you're already behaving how married people do. You're maybe looking at stuff online. We have access to this now that you know they didn't before. Um, you're dating someone or you're approaching Xena um, in any kind of sense like that. Um, if you're doing any of these things, then marriage would be required for you. And the, the um, how would you say, the, the institution of marriage doesn't just fall on the, the wife and husband or the bride and the groom, but it also falls primarily on the parents because it's a right that the child has over the parents. Aish is going to tell us a little bit about that. Why does the parent have to make sure and get the kids married? is due to one thing and one thing only. You know, times change and everyone says the age of 18 makes someone an adult. But in reality, in Islam, and what we are learned and taught, uh, and, and taught, <laughs> what, we are, what we learn and are taught is that the angels on our shoulders begin to write down our deeds when we have reached the age of puberty. So you want to safeguard yourself and your kids and, you know, your friend, your neighbor from having these things written on their deed, like committing, you know, what do you say, Xena, fornication. So you just want to, you know, get it done in a halal way so that you won't be sinning. You know, there's rewards for someone engaging in romance while you're married but there's also a sin if you engage in intimacy when you're not married so this is why it's important that you try to safeguard yourself and your family from falling into this mashallah very well um so who would you recommend or what would you recommend a woman look for when she's looking for her spouse. So first off is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said when someone gets married they look for four things. That is wealth, 
beauty um, lineage and Iman. Best one is to look for Iman. But nowadays, anyone can put on a friend. This is me talking now. Anyone can put on a friend. So what I would recommend is that you look for someone with good character. Someone with good character will be easy to teach. And you know, they will, they will eventually get to that point of having great Iman, great practice, great outward acts that, you know, will help you and your family move forward as a Muslim family. Good. Your turn. What would you recommend? Um, so when looking for a wife, I would recommend that you look for someone who is really going to be the mother of your children mm -hmm. and look for a woman who will be able to, um, complete the other half of your dean. So, you know, really focusing on, uh, finding someone who's going to be able to grow with you spiritually and also make sure that she takes care of all of the business with the children and is going to be a good mother for your children. If you end up picking someone who you think is a fantastic wife for yourself, but she ends up being a terrible mother for your children, that's going to be a very bad situation. So basically, so, choose someone for the beauty, but not... If, if you were to choose someone for their beauty, but they have a terrible character, yeah. they're going to um, inculcate your children with a terrible character. And, you know, then it's going to cause a lot of hardship and problems for yourself far more than whatever um, joy or benefit you think you're deriving from uh, beauty, which is so temporary. Mm -hmm. So, this is just our advice, you know, you can take it or leave it. But, you know, it's easy, you know, when you get married, you kind of intend to build a family, so you want that you have, you know, the next thing we're going to talk about, because you want to make this video pretty quick, so we're running through it, is the rights of each spouse. So you can go ahead and start. So, um, the rights of the wife in Islam would include... Um, having her uh, finances paid for so she would have um, you know the house should be provided to her uh, food should be provided to her clothing uh, medical care sanitation and grooming all of the requirements that you have for basically all of your needs mm -hmm. she has a right to all of these things being provided for her and Another right that she has is um, to be to be guarded and protected. So, you know, you have to look after her emotional welfare, her spiritual welfare, just as much as her physical we welfare. So, making sure that you're um, teaching and guiding the family, um, teaching them more about Islam, and, you know, at the end of the day, when you're meeting with the law, going over your life, you're going to be responsible for everyone who was put into your care. Now, that's enough to get anyone very serious about um, the responsibilities, the increased responsibilities that a husband will have when it comes to caring for and providing for his wife. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that uh, young men try to and old men, you continue to try and improve all the time. Just because you reach a certain age doesn't mean you stagnate. Uh, every day you should be striving to be better. And one of the main um, aspects of that, one of the main pillars that hold that up, I think, is how you treat people. And the center of that is going to be how you treat your family. Rasulullah mm sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of you is the one who is best to his family. And I am best to my family. The word there, um, ahl, can be translated as family and also translated as wife specifically. So there's a general and specific meaning there. And both are very, very valid. So it's very important that you're good to your family and that you're good to your wife. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, did I miss any of the main rights of the wife there? Uh, no, that's her right. So I'm going to just go ahead and touch on a few of the rights of the husband. The first one is 
respect your husband deserves your respect just like how your boss your father you know people ahead of you over you deserve respect so does your husband and the second one is obedience obedience here is that your husband gets the final say it's not that you get married and all of a sudden you lost it you, you, you lose your freedom it's not like that it's just that he's the head of the household so he gets the final word for example you're indecisive on which school you want your kid to go to you have a school in mind and he has a school in mind so what you would do is you know sit down with your husband bring your pros and cons to the table and hear his pros and cons and after he weighs it he will just make the decision that he thinks it is right for the household. And the third one is God, his property. So you won't be spending his money excessively. Like he's the one to provide for you. You don't really have to do anything. But you will help him out by guarding his property. If he tells you to not let Jimmy John drive his truck, you will tell Jimmy John he can't drive it because you're guarding his property. And so on and so forth. And the next one is loyalty. Loyalty is that, you know, if he asks you not to speak to Jimmy John, you don't go speak to Jimmy John. Well, you wouldn't and, be speaking to a man anyway. Okay, Jamisha John. Jamisha John. Jamisha? <laughs> Jamisha John. You won't go to speak to Jamisha John. And another thing is, you know, we're going to touch on this on another video, but like polygamy. I know you might think it's like stepping out of the marriage, but it's not. So like... You would think, oh, he stepped out, stepped out of the marriage. I get to do it too. No, you have to still remain loyal to your husband. And we will go on that topic in a later video. Of course, you will want that. Bismillah. Inshallah. Inshallah. And of course, you will want him to be honest with you and stuff like that. <laughs> so we will hope that our husband comes to us with honesty on how he's feeling. It's extremely important that a husband always goes to his wife for advice and consultation. Mm -hmm. And it's not masculine to never ask your wife for advice or listen to her or do what she says or asks but it's actually the best man that ever lived Rasulullah would occasionally take his wife's advice and would always seek her advice when making decisions and stuff like this so it, it, while it's not legally necessary to, to leave it out would be um, a very bad character and, not and it's a good not common thing. courtesy you know you can make ill feelings between yourself and you don't want to try to burn down your own house trying to build a new one more or less. And then the fifth one is intimacy, full stop. Now let's continue. Oh, you don't want to elaborate on the, the rights of intimacy? No. If you want, you can go ahead and do it, but I'm fine. Well, I think um, from your list there, I noticed that a lot of them do go both ways, you know. Mm -hmm. Definitely respect is um, going both ways. And, of course, it can, you know... I think it's a lot about being appreciative um, of the role that the other person plays because both are going to play their role and with that you have so much harmony and goodness that comes from it rather than both people competing for the same role. So if you if you fill your role, whatever you decide that's going to be for yourselves and then appreciate what the other person contributes rather than thinking about them in your own terms. Like, oh, I bring home the money. You don't bring home any money. You don't contribute. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I do all the cooking and cleaning. You don't do anything. It's not like that. You both have your own role. So you should be so appreciative and compliment the other person for the role that they're filling. Um, and loyalty also definitely goes both ways. A man shouldn't be looking or talking to, um, you know, women who he's not related to or have a friend who's, who's just a friend but she's a girl or stuff like this would be a, a breach of trust and, and it would be a violation of the Sharia. Her. Oh yeah, sure, you know, you can have... Um, you know, usually some guys will go and talk to this girl for like a few months and then all of a sudden drop a bomb and say, hey, I'm marrying I'm this person. So it would feel like a breach of trust, trust, so it's important that communication is always there. Well, I think you see that a lot with like schools and offices like a lot of people who are students or a lot of people who are co-workers in mixed places they just end up dating each other all the time it's just natural you know so um that's one reason why islam has a bit of a separation of the genders but maybe well, that'll be another video as well yeah and then intimacy is also a right that both of them have the man has a right to um 
to intimacy and comfort from his wife, and the wife also has a right for these things from her husband. So both um, both of those are also, I think, uh, rights that both uh, the husband has over the wife and the wife has over the husband. So I'm just going back to the the rights of a woman of a woman. You know, it probably seemed like it was short. Like I listed five things and kind of explained on him. He just gave you a whole paragraph to go with. But here is the list for the women. They have the right to housing, clothing, sanitary products, food, and medical. Medical. You know, he pays for your medical bills. Yeah. Care. Medical care. And one thing I want to mention too. You know, each household will have their own setup. Not every house is the same, like cookie cutter the same. If a husband decides and a husband and wife decides together that they want to, you know, swap roles, the husband be the stay at home dad, help out with the kids. And then the mom, you know, she might be a dentist and pretty good at it and wants to continue that. And they do decide to continue those things, then it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. They both will get double rewards because they're doing, you know, what is not needed of them. They're doing like charity work more or less. So it works out both ways. So any household that decides, you know, they want to switch roles or whatever, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, there's, um, you know, members of my family who have that arrangement. And there's no problem with that. But um, one thing that's important to know is uh, the rights don't change. You can't... Um, erase your rights you can waive them temporarily for example the wife can say to the husband you don't need to provide anything financially i love my job as a dentist and i'm going to pay all the bills uh, but you pick up all the housework and the husband says you know i waive my right to have you um do this and that in the house for me and i'm pretty good at math i can teach the kids i can teach the kids i can um you know or whatever your situation is you can totally agree to that and what you mutually agree to do is is permissible and is fine but um if a if a situation were to come up where the wife does say you know hey i want you to start paying the bills again that's not a discussion that's not a, um you know something that the husband can, can argue with because that's one of the rights of the wife so uh the rights still remain if you mutually agree to do something then you of course can do that and like, like I said, okay. you get a better reward for it. And you want to have common courtesy before dropping the bomb, saying, Hey, okay, I'm, you're not washing the dishes properly. You go to work and I'm going to stay home, you know? And the rinse yeah. do. Yeah, you yeah. can't do that. You should have common courtesy. Of course you can do it, but you know, you don't want to put you and your whole family in such a predicament because if he can't find a job and you don't want to pay the bills, then you guys have have to sleep somewhere outside near a tree or something like that. Yeah. You want to have that come courtesy. There's the there's the legal right, and then there's also what's common sense what's and what's moral. moral. Yeah, mm -hmm. the ethical virtue part of it. Okay, um, mashallah. Do you have any other parts you were thinking? No, I think that's it, honey. Uh, the only advice that I would have to add there is I think um, for a marriage and for someone who's planning to get into a marriage and for someone who's looking uh, or in a marriage that it's very important that you understand a marriage is not 50 50 it's not a 50 50 partnership it's a hundred a hundred both parties need to give 100 percent because the other part part partner uh the other party is having a bad day and it's given 10 percent and you got to do that 90 percent then that's what it is if you insist and you're just so hard and you say, I'm only doing 50%, you have to come up with 50 every day. You know, anytime one of you has a bad day, it's going to be a problem. So it's important that you, uh, it's important you support the other and that you're protecting for each other so that like when one of you has a bad time, that you can, you know, fill up, like pick up the slack, so to speak. And I think... The main focus is uh, ideally if the men could all just only learn the rights of the wife and not learn their own rights. <laughs> and then the woman does the same. Because some people get caught up, me, 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 thinking about what I am do and what I deserve rather than thinking about what I'm supposed to do, what my responsibilities are. Because on the day of judgment, no one is going to ask you, did your wife do everything for you? That, you know, Did she fulfill your rights? No. 
Allah is going to ask you, did you fulfill her rights? So go for the selfless way instead of the selfish way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that mindset is really important. And it's so different in, in the Western culture where it's like, well, what am I getting out of the relationship? You know, or, you know, me, me, me. And always thinking about, um, you know, this kind of this kind of stuff I think is, is problematic of like, oh, if you don't treat me with respect, then I'm not going to treat you with any respect. It's like... Um, you know, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "If if you're treated good and you treat others good, add you respond with good still anyway." So, you know, so this is the Muslim mindset, not just with strangers, but if you do it with strangers, especially you have to do it with your family mm -hmm. and treat your family with goodness. So, yeah, all good. Yeah. So that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next week when we discuss. Mahar and finances. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thanks for tuning in. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.